Hi everyone, how are you doing? Um, what have you been reading? Uh, for the second half of October, uh, I had a bit of like Booker fever and so uh, was trying to finish reading all of the shortlisted books um, for this year's Man Booker Prize. But I didn't get through them all. I didn't manage to get to His Bloody Projects. That's the only one I didn't read on the shortlist. Uh, but I did read all the others, including um, David Shugley's, not Sh 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 I don't know how you say that, his novel All That Man Is. And this is a book that's about nine distinct characters, male characters, and uh, their lives. And it's, I mean, it's more basically short stories. Each um, section doesn't really have anything to do with the other ones, um, except for the last one, which uh, really relates back to one of them. Um, unless I miss some connections, other connections, uh, but uh, but I think that was the only one. It's, it's kind of interesting, because I think each of these stories are compelling and interesting enough, each of these characters are compelling enough to be a novel in their their own. They, they could have been their own novel. They could have been, their stories could have been expanded out to, to tell their own stories. Uh, but um, they, they come together to form this sort of picture over the course of uh, life of a man, um, starting from teenagehood. Uh, the first story is about a teenage boy uh, sort of bumming around Europe with his friend, and then it ends with a, a man in very old age and, uh, and his experiences. And, uh, and it charts over the course of the stories all of this typically masculine drive for power and status. And so it makes an interesting picture of, of what a man is. And like I said, each story is sort of interesting on its own. There's a, a story about a sort of slacker French boy who, who goes on this god-awful holiday, cheap holiday trip to Cyprus and is around other holiday makers and his sort of fumbling um, to, to have a party and a good time um, in this uh, very rundown environment. And then there's another story about a journalist who's um, a slightly sleazy journalist who's trying to break this big story about an affair that a government official is having and, uh, and the consequences of that. And then there's a later story about a um, very wealthy uh, Russian sort of tycoon and his later life um, traveling around on his yacht and how his empire is basically crumbling around him. His um, female partner and um, is uh, leaving him with his children and he's going through these lawsuits. I really enjoyed the, the stories, but then I couldn't help wondering throughout part of it, like, like um, just because of the title, like, well, is this all that man is? Because I, I didn't really identify too strongly with any of the characters in particular. You know, I didn't really recognize myself too much in them. And that's not a bad thing. I, 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 um, I enjoyed reading about them and I recognized how um, realistic these men are. But, uh, but it, it, um, it seemed like he was satirizing the, the state of masculinity, and, um, uh, which I'm all up for. It, like, uh, it, it needs to be satirized. And these stere stereotypical men who have controlled society for a long time really ought to be like knocked off their perches like that. But it made me wonder how, uh, you know, this, this doesn't really represent all men. It just represents um, certain kinds of men. So it, it's, a, it's a really interesting book and, and um, interesting to think how these, these traits about these men's lives um, sort of weave in and out of each other, the way they approach relationships, the way they um, approach their place in society. But overall was a very enjoyable book. Uh, the next novel I read was Paul Beatty's novel, The Sellout, and I, I read this while I was on a short holiday away out of the country, and it was a good thing that uh, I, I read it, because uh, when I got back, I went to the uh, Man Booker Prize parties for um, some of the publishers. I had a really excellent time at the One World's Booker Prize party. Uh, lots of drinks were had. I was there with my friend Anna James, who's a, a case for books. If you uh, don't watch her channel, um, watch her channel. She does great videos. I'll uh, put a link down below to uh, Anna's YouTube channel. And, uh, and also uh, my good friend Uli, who's a co-manager of Gaze the Word Bookshop. And uh, we had probably way too many drinks, uh, got very tipsy, and it all got a bit messy. But uh, it was really great fun. It turned out that the sellout did win the Man Booker Prize. 
and it's a really interesting choice, a really surprising choice. I personally was really gunning for Madeleine Tien to win for her novel, Do Not Say We Have Nothing, which is a beautiful, really emotional, powerful book about Chinese history and identity. So I'd really encourage you to read Madeleine Tien's book. Uh, but Paul Beatty's novel is really interesting, um, also a kind of uh, satire, which contemplates uh, racial identity in America in the present and the, the history of uh, racial conflict. It is about a man uh, called Me, uh, who's a black man from uh, Los Angeles, and he's gone to a Supreme Court trial for owning a slave and um, for wanting to reinstigate segregation in his community. And so the novel starts that way, and then it goes to the backstory about his uh, being raised by a really um, terrifying in some ways, uh, but really fascinating social scientist, um, psychologist, who did all sorts of horrible behavioralist experiments on his uh, son when he was younger, and then about his uh, young adulthood, about his relationship with a woman who is a bus driver, and about this club of uh, black intellectuals that meet at this donut shop uh, who call themselves the Dum Dum uh, Intellectuals. And he makes a lot of references throughout to images of black people in our culture, in films and in books, and, uh, and he sort of playfully talks about how some novels, some American classics, are rewritten with black characters as the protagonists, as the heroes, as having uh, much more uh, sophisticated and complex identities than have been stereotypically shown in portrayals of them in the past. And there's also a character who proclaims himself to be the protagonist's slave, um, who actively wants to be beaten by the protagonist, uh, who is a former actor, who is the only surviving uh, cast member from this sitcom from a long time ago, uh, which uh, was about a group of children and had really dodgy portrayals of uh, race in it. And it's, a, it's sort of about how he like inhabits all of these racial stereotypes and takes them upon himself and actively participates in his subjugation. So he makes a lot of clever, interesting points in this. Um, uh, uh, fascinating way of thinking about the, the past and racial identity. And, and, and so like, how do we deal with this in the present? Do we try to erase the past or rewrite the past? or just see it in a broader context to decide how we relate to each other as different races today in society today. It's a fascinating book, but, uh, but at the same time, I, I felt like it was more, one of those more very idea-centered books rather than a compelling story. I mean, there's, there's not too much plot and story to like draw you through other than this, this premise of that the, the protagonist is trying to reclaim his neighborhood by reintroducing segregation, uh, which is a really interesting concept. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't feel drawn into the heart of the characters and the stories um, the way I usually do, like the way I was in Madeleine Thien's novel. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting choice and a great book to read. And like I said, I um, had the excitement of going to the uh, Man Booker Prize parties and I was at their their party when uh, it was announced that Paul Beatty won. So you can imagine there was a lot of excitement. And I'll show you um, that, that moment from that evening. Uh, but I want to warn you, you might want to turn your sound down a bit because uh, there are obviously big cheers when it is announced that he actually wins. So uh, here, watch this. The winner of the 2016 Man Booker Prize for Fiction is the sellout. Yeah! So it was a really exciting, fun evening, big celebration going on and great for One World um, because they also won the Booker Prize last year when Marlon James' novel, uh, his beautiful epic novel, 
A Brief History of Seven Killings won the Booker Prize last year, so they're really on a roll. And it's been really interesting reading both the Booker shortlist and some of the titles from the long list, uh, a really diverse group of books. I mean, I just love prizes for the way that they provoke a lot of discussion about books, which uh, probably wouldn't be talked about otherwise. In the big cluttered marketplace of publishing, you know, a lot of books come and go and, uh, and just aren't noticed in the way that they deserve to be. And so uh, I, I think it's great that, uh, that Paul Beatty's novel and the other books on the shortlist have really got the attention that they have. So the third book I read in the second half of this month was Naomi Alderman's novel The Power, uh, which is a really fun, great, like it's a, it's a, it's also a like high concept book, but um, really compelling and uh, energetic story that just pulls you along. It takes place over 10 years as adolescent girls and then more women um, discover that they have this special power within them to sort of control electricity with their hands. Uh, there's a, a sort of special thing under the, the woman's clavicle which generates or harnesses this, this special electrical power which they're able to use through their hands as a kind of weapon if they can train themselves uh, to, to use it in that way. And it charts 10 years of women discovering this power and using it to have a growing matriarchal society which, which gradually takes over uh, a lot of societies. And, um, and this creates a lot of conflict, obviously, uh, as, as women take this much more controlling role, um, conflict between women and men, and also between women and women um, as they decide how they want to use this power and as different women sort of scramble for power. And it's specifically about uh, a few specific characters. There's a girl who comes from a broken foster home who sort of reinvents herself as Mother Eve and kind of uh, leads this uh, religious type cult. And there is a, a teenage British woman who's the uh, daughter of a gangster who controls this new drug trade. And there is a Nigerian man who is a journalist who is trying to document this, uh, this growing rise of power of women. And uh, so um, it's, it's interesting that I read this and also um, the novel All That Man Is, because they're both books that really think about gender in a complex way. And Alderman uh, approaches gender in how it's both everything about a person and uh, doesn't really mean anything. Because if you look at individual people, uh, their gender doesn't really matter. Um, you know, each of us are like complex uh, beings and our gender is just one facet of our identity. But then if you look at how it impacts the way we interact in society, our status in society, uh, and, and the way people react to us, it sort of means everything. And so, uh, so yeah, so she approaches this in a really interesting way. And it's a really fun, enjoyable story and very clever. Um, it's sort of framed within this device where it's actually a man who's writing the novel. And at the beginning and end of the book, uh, there's this correspondence between this man, this male writer, and a woman who is sort of critiquing his book. And in doing so, I'm not going to give it away about the end, it makes a clever twist on how you can think about the whole story, which is uh, really clever and interesting. It's sort of the same thing that Margaret Atwood does at the end of The Handmaid's Tale, if you've read that. So I'd really recommend this as a fascinating book uh, that looks at gender and also um, a way of looking at history and society. So those are the books that I've been reading, but what have you been up to and what have you been reading? Um, have you read any of these books and what do you think about the Man Booker Prize? Was there another book that you would have liked to have seen win? Or um, did you, were you really rooting for the sellout as well? Let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you all again soon. Uh, thanks for watching and happy reading everyone!